In this video, I will cover what to look for in an open educational resource and where to look for it. In order to know where to look, first, how do you decide exactly what you are searching for? Well, Backward Design provides some questions to ask yourself in order to figure that out. What is Backward Design? If you're not familiar with it, Google Understanding by Design, and it is easy to find a summary. Basically, in Backward Design, you create instructions by starting with what you want your learners to know and be able to do once they've completed it. In other words, first you have your learning objectives. From there, you move to how you will know whether they know and can do that stuff. In other words, the second step is the assessments. Third, you think about how they will acquire that knowledge and those skills. So the third step is the learning activities in which they engage with the content, each other, and particular problem solving or creating activities. When you are hoping to find open educational resources to fulfill your learning objectives, it may be an assessment, a learning activity, or a piece of content around which you'll build your own learning activity. So you need to be very clear on your learning objectives in order to know whether it will work for you. You also need to have a clear picture of who your learners are and how they best learn. A third factor is if you've already chosen other pieces of content, whatever you select will need to fit into and work with that. It's very common, even for experienced librarians, to start a search with the idea of what the resource should be about. But we have to retrain ourselves to instead think of what are our learning objectives. It's easy to find an open educational resource that is about the right thing, but still isn't right for our purposes because it's focused on the wrong subtopic or approaching the topic wrong or uses schools of thought that don't mesh well with the rest of what we're doing. If you haven't chosen your learning activities yet, you have more flexibility in choosing open educational resources because you can build activities up around what you find. But it is still probably better to at least have an idea of what kind of learning activities will work best for your learning objectives and your learners. Your instruction should be driven by those things and not just be a compromise with what resources you're able to find. You have a lot of options, so don't have a scarcity mindset. Create excellent instruction and then find resources that support that. So when you're selecting open educational resources, you have in mind already, one, how much time your learners should be spending on interacting with that particular resource. Do you want a two minute video or a 20 minute video? Two. What medium and genre would be best? Do you want a text that they can read deeply or a diagram that gives them a fast overview? And three, what particular skills or concepts must be addressed? Do you need your archaeology simulation to cover just stratigraphy or stratigraphy and handling artifacts? Of course, you also need to consider your learner's characteristics when you're selecting open educational resources for them. You'll be considering their academic level and level of preparation for the material of the course. But you may also have an idea of what format or genre they work better with. More advanced students may be very comfortable with absorbing text, while beginning students may need to be warmed up to that skill level and supported with videos and diagrams. You may have students whose previous academic experience hasn't given them a chance to use what they learn in a creative or generative way, so you might have to choose OERs that scaffold that or are amenable to your providing some scaffolding. In addition to the usual preparations and accommodations we make, your course may be especially attractive to English language learners, or veterans with traumatic brain injury, or students from a Lebanese cultural background. So you may be selecting open educational resources with certain special criteria in mind. Finally, you may already have some content for the course or that module. Maybe there's a standard textbook you need to use, or a set of seminal works that students must read, an excellent open educational resource you're already using, or you've recorded a series of mini-lectures with accompanying diagrams and notes. You'll have to search for open educational resources that harmonize with what you already have, while filling in the gaps and building upon them. Your courses may be built entirely from found materials, built from found materials that you've adapted and remixed to suit your purposes better, or built from a combination of found and adapted materials and materials that you've created. It's up to the course creator to determine what mix works best. You'll find as you begin to search for open educational resources that some search tools are very basic and only allow you to search by keyword. Others actually have options to select educational level, language, format, and genre, like audio, audio-video, image, text, game, etc., 
and duration. Most of the time, you will need to take a hard look at each potentially useful search result to see how it meets those criteria, and also to have a look at the quality and depth of the content, the production values, and the feel of it. Subsequent videos in this series will talk about where and how to look for those open educational resources.